Good afternoon. We are here this afternoon to talk about some of the uh, crimes that have been happening in Minneapolis lately. Uh, but we know that we do that in a context of some terrible things that have been happening in Tennessee. Our hearts go out to the folks who are suffering in Chattanooga, to the families of those who've been slain. And also recognize that we have people here in Minneapolis right now who are grieving themselves, who have families and loved ones who themselves have been killed as a result of homicide recently and others who have been injured due to shootings. We're here today to send a message, first and foremost, to the people of Minneapolis, that we know that there are people who are, excuse me, that we know that there are people who are scared. We know that there are people who are concerned about the crimes that have happened recently in the last few weeks. We also are here to convey that we share that sentiment, we share the concern, and we know that those crimes are wrong, that we are doing everything in our power to apprehend those suspects, to solve those crimes where they have yet to be solved, and also to prevent future crime, to prevent sh future shootings, and to prevent future homicide. Everyone deserves to be safe. Everyone deserves to feel safe in their homes, on their blocks, and in their neighborhoods. Violent crime is up only slightly over this time last year. Robberies of bellwether crime are down over this time last year. However, non-fatal shootings are up. Two-thirds of all non-fatal shootings have happened on the north side, and homicide is up eight more than this time last year. Those are chilling statistics in an overall picture that has been improving over time, because we know that even though some of these crime statistics are good, what people care about is what's been happening recently and what's going to be happening in the near future. My job as mayor, our jobs as policymakers and elected officials in Minneapolis are to ensure that we are preventing crime, intervening in crime, and responding to crime when it happens as effectively as we can. Long term, this is an issue we've been dealing with as a city. This is an issue that we have had all hands on deck for quite some time in ways that have been innovative, in ways that have gotten results for the city of Minneapolis and the people here. It's not just a question of our police department. Our health department, our economic development department, our regula regulatory services department, our health department, all have been key players in doing our work on youth violence prevention. We just got a promise zone designation that is all about how do we keep our north side safe. We have a burn grant initiative also designed to help us with public safety and reduction of crime over time. My Brother's Keeper initiative, our national initiative to help with police community relations, all are things designed to keep our city safe and make it even safer over time. That's to make sure that our kids a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, are living in a safe city and do not have to live through some of the things that our neighbors and our kids have been living through in these last few weeks. Because really what folks are caring about and what we need to address here today is not just what is going to happen five years from now and ten years from now. We've had steady, consistent effort on the big picture and the long term, and I'm proud of that work. But right now we need to talk about what's going to happen five days from now, ten days from now, five weeks from now, ten weeks from now. And indeed, what we have been doing for the last few days and the last few weeks in response to some of the incidents that have happened. In that context, I want to say thank you to the Minneapolis Police Department. We ask a great deal of our officers to respond in times of crisis, at people's worst moments, and to see things that we wouldn't ask anybody to see. We ask them to see, to respond to, and to handle and manage well. And my gratitude goes to them for the great work that they've been doing uh, overall and in response, to, in particular, to some of the incidents from the last few weeks. I will also say that this is a community partnership for people who have information about the crimes that have happened lately, for people who have information about these shootings, for people who have information about homicides that they can share with us. We need you to. The safety of our community and people's experience of our community depends on good neighbors coming forward to let us know what they know in an atmosphere that will be safe for them, as safe as we can possibly make it. To speak to what we've been doing practically, to speak to what's been happening on the ground recently and what will happen in the next period of time, uh, I would like to invite Assistant Chief Arneson to come forward. Thank you, Mayor. 
Nationally, non-fatal shootings are up 30% in major cities. They are up in Minneapolis also, but not as significantly. So far this year, 111 people have been victims of non-fatal shootings, a 6.7% increase over last year. 74 of those non-fatal shooting victims were heard on the north side. Non-fatal shootings are up 7% in the 4th Precinct. Overall, there have been 26 homicides in the city this year. 12 have been on the north side. Four of those have been, those victims have been under the age of 25. I just returned from a scene on DuPont Avenue where I spoke to a son. His 68-year-old mother was murdered in her own home. So what are we doing about it, particularly on the north side? We have a joint enforcement team where we bring in other law enforcement partners to target gun violence on Friday and Saturday nights. They're getting guns off the street. We have a new gang unit, gang interdiction team. We launched that on June 1st. It's seven officers that disrupt and defuse gang violence and obtain gang intel and respond to all of our shooting calls up there. We have investigators that respond to every shooting call, whether or not there is a victim. They're following up on all of these shots fired calls. They talk to people in the neighborhood and connect the guns and the bullets by entering them into our national network system. We have our Safe Streets team. They focus on north side gangs. Firearm recoveries are up 33% this year. Arrests resulting in charges are up 29%. We will not accept that shooting increases are a national trend here in Minneapolis. We are ahead of the curve, but nowhere near where we want to be or really where we need to be. We are being aggressive and relentless as we search for the people who are hurting and killing our residents. We will continue to put every available resource out on the streets in an effort to prevent future acts of violence because we want to keep our citizens safe. That's the bottom line. So what I'm doing in the short term here is adding additional eight officers to the north side for patrol and uh, engagement in those hotspot areas for the next several days uh, and the weeks to come. Uh, also, I'm placing additional weapons and safe street officers out there in uniform to engage with the folks who live up there. We want people to feel safe. We want you to come out of your house. So, uh, you know, please work with us on this. I thank the mayor for encouraging people to tell us what's going on. I think we have great investigations going on in all of these cases. We're relentless. Uh, we're you know, putting additional investigators on all of these cases, but we need help from the community. We can't do this alone. We really need their help. So I'm going to introduce uh, Inspector Mike Friesleben, who is the 4th uh, Precinct Inspector. Thank you and good afternoon. Um, overall, the 4th Precinct egg assaults are up 7%. That includes shootings. Um, uh, we have been very deliberate where we're putting our resources, trying to get it head off into those hot zones where a lot of the, uh, the shooting violence is occurring. Um, we're saturating those areas with lots of patrols, some specialty units. Um, we really have five hot zone type areas we have right now where we're saturating. That was like the Glenwood and Penn area, um, like 14th to 16th in the Morgan, Newton, Oliver areas. Um, 16th and 17th in the Upton and uh, Thomas areas. Um, uh, we have a large area in the middle of the precinct around Lindale to 26th, and that'll go from um, Bryant to Penn. And then we have uh, Lowry to 36th, Bryant over to Fremont. Uh, every day we're putting as much extra you know, patrol in those areas that we can. Uh, we're using, we have a directed patrol team, which we've increased their size this year. Uh, we have a, new, a new, newly developed neighborhood patrol team, and their specific duty is to be in some of the you know, traditional high crime areas on the north side, and not only try to slow those areas down, but connect with the people in those areas and work with the communities members in those areas together to, to make those areas peaceful. Um, that's 10 extra officers we've added to the north side. We have a community response team, and then we're putting extra officers out on beats. We have uh, 
We're up about 66% on foot beats we've put out. We've put them out in all kinds of areas. And really those officers are out there to be visible. We want them engaging with the community and they're doing an incredible job. We're getting great feedback on that. Uh, we've put bike patrols, we've put them everywhere. Um, we specifically put them though, we target uh, the Broadway Avenue because it's so busy and it's easy for those bikes to get around. And um, they do just an incredible job of getting out and meeting community members and they do an excellent job with the kids. The kids just love the bikes. Um, we've also deployed the horses, including today, four different times and put them in areas where people have contact with those officers on the horses, uh, and those have been a big hit. Um, we've recorded over 7,000 positive contacts, meaning getting the businesses, street contacts, where it's, uh, it's not law enforcement, it's, it's, it's officers meeting the people that they police. And the fourth police officer, officers have gone out to over 160 community member, uh, community meetings and engagements this year. Uh, and that's really a, one of the big strong goals we have in our precinct is to get our officers out to the community meetings and engagements and, and where they get to see people at their best and learn names and faces and, and then the community members get to see the, the police officers at their best. Um, that's been a very big hit. Um, uh, officers are volunteering. Uh, when you see them out there, they're actually engaging. They're not, you know, standing around. They're engaging and getting interested in people's lives. Um, all these things we're, we're doing is to build engagement with the community and the, uh, the police officers, uh, public trust. Um, and right now we're really lucky to have this engagement with the community. Uh, the officers are certainly invested in this and I really feel that we're making immediate progress. It's baby steps. We needed to get much better with the engagement. But at the time, uh, we're just hearing really great things about the events they're at. Uh, uh, two weekends in particular, our officers went to 12 events in less than 48 hours on the north side. So, um, and thank you for your time, and I'd like to introduce Prince, uh, President Barb Johnson. Well, thank you, <clears throat> Inspector, and, and um, I always know when I get up uh, in the morning um, and look at my phone and there's a message from uh, Inspector Frieslaven that uh, it is almost always not uh, good news. Uh, this morning, um, woke up to the very early morning notice of uh, two people shot, one fatally, another apparently grievously injured um, in uh, Ward 5. Um, it, it is just shocking, uh, the level of uh, uh, violent activity. And I think people are frightened, I really do. Um, uh, and so I, I am pleased to hear about the added patrols. I think that's really important to say to people um, to step up our work. Uh, I agree, the police have done a great job with community outreach, with being very, very visible in North Minneapolis. And I want to say I really like that. There are some people that don't, but I really do. Um, I want to just say something about the homicide that happened in my ward this morning. The, neighbor who was found uh, in her home, as um, Assistant Chief Arneson said, she is, was a friend of mine. And I have known her for a very, very long time. She was on the board of the Neighborhood Association. She was on the board of the Na Na uh, Northside Arts Collective. She's an artist. She does beautiful, beautiful beadwork. There are people all over this community that have artwork on them, on their ju jewelry that she has made. She gave me, a couple years ago, a very lovely uh, sunglasses uh, rope so that I didn't lose my sunglasses. I was setting them down all the time and forgetting them. She made me this lovely sun sunglass holder. And I can't tell you how upset people are in North Minneapolis because of the loss of this lady. This is a neighborhood that I grew up in. Little story and a half bungalows, people living in them. When I grew up, you know, there were seven kids living in those houses. You know, now they're filled with some, some have families in them, but some of them have single ladies living by themselves. And I can tell you the names of many of them around that neighborhood. They are afraid. They are going to be more afraid. And I hope and I know the police will do everything that they can to find the perpetrator of this crime. But this is what we're talking about. These are the people that are harmed by this terrible kind of violent activity. And it hurts all of us, it hurts our city. So thank you for joining us today and 
We just have to change this dynamic in the city.